So this is about an artist tabling at a convention. I want to preface this by saying, please don't send hate to the artist. I never want to impact an artist negatively in any way, like besides AI art. AI art is not even art. I really want artists to make money. I really want artists to be able to live off of making their art. If I was like Mark Zuckerberg level rich, I would just, I don't know, like commission a fuck ton of artists to draw. Also, I know I sound very sympathetic towards them, but that was before all the other stuff that would be revealed later came out. But this is a tweet put up by M4G55 stating, I've never had sales this bad at Anthrocon. I really do feel like the artist alley it being sort of pushed aside is really tearing down my sales. This is a quote retweet of their tweet stating, day two in the Anthrocon artist alley booth B21. But Anthrocon is a furry convention that takes place in Pennsylvania. It also happened to fall during the exact same window as Anime Expo this year. So this is a photo of their booth. And their booth looks really cute. I love the use of yellow. It is extremely eye-catching, which I think is really smart to get people's attention on your booth. So here we can see they have stickers. They're selling $3 each or two for five, $5 each for these ones or two for eight. I love this penguin one. This one's really cute here. And then they have these other pieces, which a lot of people were talking about. So they have sketch badges for $125. Here were some examples of people's personas, I believe. Rendered badges for $300. Traditional badges at $1,000. And they have acrylic badges at $450. So in the furry Wikipedia, aka Wikifur, it says con badges are personalized identification badges, usually three to four inches in size, that can be used to identify a fur. Con badges are called such because they're typically worn at a convention or gathering. There's two main kinds of badges, membership or official badges, which are issued by convention hosts, and artist badges or fursona badges, which are a special form of commission. Most often the term con badge refers to the latter. What three sent me this link, and this is an example of their badge but thank you for showing me this this really clarifies it more because i was trying to find an example of it in use okay so looking at this these are the sketch badges which is just a headshot of somebody's persona and then we have rendered badges which looks like a fully rendered version of the headshot with a color background so traditional badges would be traditional art and the other pieces are digital art and then they also offer acrylic badges for 450 dollars, which looks like a really really large acrylic keychain that you would then clip to your badge that has your fursona and the name. We have Naka Wolf commenting, it might be the prices. Like you did badges for $75 and want $1,000 for one. I don't know. It reads like you're out of touch and inflating all your prices to the point where nobody can afford them. M4 says, on average, I get 30 commissions minimum per con. I got seven from two days here. The prices are not the issue. Everyone had trouble today. I understand what you're saying, but it really is an issue with how the artists were shoved in the back. Zofer asked, have you ever sold a $1,000 badge? Just curious. M4 says, yes, I have a few times because people have responded to badly bullied etc people who've paid for it i wasn't given permission to post it because of their protection it's not something i get at every convention but it does happen i also just want to say bullying people for how they spend their money is not a cool thing to do i know it can feel bad if somebody has more money than you and therefore they're spending it on what you deem to be frivolous stuff i mean i've definitely been in the position right where i had no money but i saw people buying like nice cars and stuff and i'm like bro but at the end of the day i was the one without money and i have no right to police how other people spend their money it's your money you can do whatever you want with it so i think bullying somebody for purchasing a $1,000 badge is dumb. So if somebody has $1,000 to throw around on a custom drawn fursona badge for themselves, go for it, bro. You're supporting an artist and you're using your money to buy something you want. Then Riley says, you too, I'm in the same boat. I'm honestly about to pack up and not vent for the rest of con. Artist Alley in the same den as big cons like this is not really ideal and no one knows we're here. M4 says, I've never had this issue even if the Artist Alley is in the same room as the dealers, but I feel like the Artist Alley is just so shoved into the back. It's really discouraging. Like I almost want to pack up and just leave, but I want to wait until the first suit parade is over just in case. Genuine question because I'm not involved in this community. What are badges in the anthro community and what makes them $1,000? Your art is amazing, but I'm unsure of why a headshot would cost so much. Is it the materials and work you need to make the badge? I'm genuinely just oblivious. I'm not trying to be rude. Some people have the funds to buy stuff like that and that's awesome. I'm just wondering what it is and why it is that price. Levi says, most badges are 30 to 125. This is crazy. Vernie says, there really is no reason. I got a fully painted with watercolors and colored pencils for $20 plus ship. Paper might cost like $30 and then pencils a few hundred if you buy the hell expensive stuff. Dumb Gate Cat says, that's what I'm saying. Like the art is obviously great, but many people aren't willing to spend that much on a badge. Like my first suit was cheaper than that. Adobe says badges are usually 75 bucks at most. And to answer the actual question, Moss says, traditional work is becoming less and less common, let alone incredibly high quality work like what's above. It isn't just the material cost, but also the time to do the piece itself and paying for the skill and expertise that the artist has. Traditional work also means you can't mess up or you have to start over entirely. And then also we have other people vouching for the artist as well. We have Lit 
interest dating. If you do sale, I'd absolutely love to stop by. I can attest to your quality and turnaround time as a past customer. The icon you made for me from MFF is still a personal favorite of mine. Here's an example of the icon that M4 made for them. This is a really pretty looking icon. I love the way it's rendered. It looks really shiny and sparkly and high quality. I love the little white dots they added. But then we have a quote retweet from another person. And this is what got my full attention. This is a tweet from um, Bummy, Boomy. I'm so sorry. I don't think I'm saying their name right. They stated, I'm not going to tell any artists on how they should price their works. However, you have to understand the economy we live in. No one can afford anything at all. If you're charging $1,000 for badges and $450 for acrylic badges at a con. People don't have the money for that. And I understand many people at the dealer's den were struggling with sales, but also y'all have to be understanding if people do avoid your booth because of prices. Some of us can barely afford toilet paper, so buying a badge for $1,000 would be off the table. And to that, I do also have to agree as well. The economy right now is really bad, so it sucks. Boomi follows up with, I 100% understand the location issue. I've heard of it happening at many cons, unfortunately. This year's Momo Con, the artist alley was at a whole different location, and I took a bunch of shoving to even get there. However, though location is a big factor in this context, but also it could be price as well as it's also affecting their sales. Once again, with the economy we live in, it's hard to really make purchases anymore that are above $100. Well, I mean, unless you have a decent job, then by all means, purchase what you like. Also, in terms of the job thing, we also have to acknowledge there were so many layoffs starting from the beginning of the year. Anybody who works in a tech industry, which is notably like a more financially stable industry, experienced layoffs. There were a lot of layoffs. A lot of my friends got laid off. People who had jobs that I thought were secure got laid off. Some of you are taking this a little too personally. Never once did I say they need to change their prices. Well, I'm saying that due to inflation, it's going to be harder for people to make a big purchase. And while yes, there are some that are able to make those purchases, many cannot unfortunately due to how high prices are for regular things that people need. So the group of people who can afford that stuff, this was a typo, it's supposed to say can, become slimmer and slimmer every year. So it's no surprise that some expensive sales are not going to sell as well as times before. Boomi states, the last thing I will say, I gave my opinion just like everyone else did. I was respectful. How other people act or respond is how they act. I control how I act. Even before my post, many others were being rude and hurt and I was just trying to be respectful and give a reason as to why sales could also have been hard as well. You can take it how you wish. I cannot control your opinions, but I'm not going to be told I can't give a respectful opinion just because people can see my post. Use that energy towards the people actually being rude. Amber says, it's fair to say 1K for a badge would be unreasonable for most people, but this is doing more harm than good. They claim to make sales normally, and if they do, I think we should be supportive instead of calling attention to how they price their art. They're getting harassed. Bunny says, I'm not sending any harassment. I'm giving a respectful opinion like everyone else is giving their own. They made the post. I gave my opinion on what they posted. I'm not harassing, nor am I sending harassment in anyways. Which I do agree. It doesn't look to me like Bunny is sending any harassment. Amber says, you've put at least 9K eyes on this issue already. It is unreasonable to assume that not one of them is going to be a hater. And if they are, then you brought them here. The respectful approach to prices out of your budget is not by the calm, not bring attention to it. Bunny says, I can't control how others act. I was respectful to them. I can only control how I act to someone else. Even before I made my post, their post got lots more traction than mine and people were giving their own opinions before I did. I'm allowed to give my opinion on things just like everyone else. Now I can be educated. I can see where everyone's coming from with their opinions and it's respectful. Personally, I like seeing everyone's opinions. I don't like the argument, oh, you are sending hate to people because you posted a negative opinion. Guys, Twitter is a public social media platform, okay? People can state why they don't like things. People can state why they like things. If you disagree with somebody's opinion, go move on, okay? It is very clear that Boomi was not sending hate to to anybody. Boomi was not saying, yeah, fuck you and your expensive prices, lower them. They didn't say anything like that. I feel like to me, Boomi was very, very respectful in how they were stating a point, a point that I personally do agree with. Do I think those prices are high? I am not part of the Anthro community. I'm not sure relative to other badge prices, it would be considered high. I don't know because I have never, never purchased one. But in terms of purchasing artwork, in general, a thousand dollars for an art piece, a singular art piece is on the expensive side. I've never commissioned a badge because I'm not part of the anthro community, but I've purchased other artwork for myself. The highest that I'm personally willing to pay for art. I love art, but because art is a luxury, I have not commissioned an art piece that is worth more than $250 because it's a lot. Art is a luxury. It's beautiful to look at. I love art. But but given this economy that I have rent to pay, bills to pay, whatever, I almost never buy anything that is very expensive. So $250 to me for an art piece is considered expensive. That's just me personally. What I garner a badge to be is a headshot of your fursona. It could sometimes be full body. They had full body examples, but it looks to be a headshot. And for headshot commissions, I personally have paid, I think the highest I paid for a headshot of myself was $90. And I want to show Dis's 
tweet because I think they summarize what I'm trying to say in a much better way than I did. I completely agree. There's charging your worth and then there's understanding your market and demographic. Maybe I'm out of touch because it's the furry community, but I have never seen anyone charge that much for badges at a con. I also want to state there is a notion that the furry community is rich, which is kind of true. There's a stereotype. That's the word. Where a lot of the furry community are people with very well-paying jobs in the tech industry, finance industry, whatever. But you also still have to know that we're in a recession right now and a lot of people in those jobs are experiencing layoffs. Most of my friends work in the tech industry. Almost all of them are laid off. Even people with good jobs that would have been willing to wail and spend thousands and thousands of dollars on art right now in this current economy might not be able to afford it because the economy is bad. <laughs> this also follows up with stating, I get the location affecting sales, but I definitely don't think that's it because there are ways to navigate that. Maybe the furry community just has bigger pockets, but I'm clutching my pearls shook it at that price. I never want to say you are an artist that's charging too much, lower your prices. I never want to tell an artist to lower their prices. I always try to tell artists to raise their prices, etc. right? I want artists to be able to live from their art Again, selfishly, I love art. If I was Jeff Bezos' levels of rich, I would just throw money at all artists and commission them for their highest price commission and just tell you to draw whatever you want just so you can take a break. And I selfishly want artists to be able to do it full time so I could look more at their beautiful art. In terms of pricing, there's a business aspect to it as well. And I took some business classes while I was at Berkeley because I intended to try to go into their business school and then I gave up. But like what Dis said, you need to understand your market and you also need to price accordingly, okay? If your prices are really, really low, one, as an artist, you're underselling yourself. But two, you are then targeting a uh, audience that maybe doesn't have as much money. If your prices are really low, then you're going to get an audience of maybe like young people, maybe just entering the job market, not as much money to spend. If you have high prices, you are more so targeting the richer demographic. This is why in many aspects as well, like even with other jobs, service jobs, like nail techs, lash techs, I don't know why I did it the other way around. If you price higher, you're going to filter to a more expensive audience, right? Between Walmart and Target, I love Walmart. Everything is freaking cheap there. You literally get the same shit, but Target is just more expensive. And that's why they price the way they do. They're trying to target a specific demographic. When it comes to art, it's the same thing. But I do think there is an upper echelon to where you hit. And this is what Boomi was stating too, where Boomi was stating that there are people who are willing to pay a thousand dollars for art. But given this economy, more and more people are losing their jobs. More and more people aren't able to afford artwork anymore because art is a luxury. And whenever the market gets crunched, your wallets get crunched, luxuries are the first things to go, which art will be the first thing you wouldn't buy. So if you're pricing yourself to target a high income demographic, but the high income demographic is experiencing a lot of layoffs, then there's going to be less and less people that can afford your art. So I do think that the pricing alongside the location could be contributing to why they can't make as many sales. That's just my personal take. Do I think their art is worth that much money? I think their art looks beautiful. I don't think art is something that that you can necessarily put a number on a lot of times. But I do think that it's one of those cases where if your art is priced to target a really high income demographic, just know that there's not that many people in that demographic. And that's just how it is. And again, cons need to do better at putting artists in a much more visible and easy to access location without a lot of crowding and clogging to get to the artist alley. So it's more easier for artists to make sales. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, there's like 50,000 trigger warnings to what I'm about to talk about because this is bad. I'm going to add 20,000 trigger warnings right now okay there's gonna be racism and there's going to be c and i'm not showing any obviously we're just talking about it and i think something about zoophilia too and a lot more was revealed about them i gave them the benefit of doubt in the beginning but i uh, cannot give them any benefit of doubt anymore because yeah then we had this tweet from metastatic i'm all for supporting artist prices but maybe let's not support somebody who constantly talks about how they want to consume and create cp is insanely racist and literally came on their cat just because people were mean about their prices. They linked a telegram with all of the proof. So here's the telegram. They go by Magpie Madness. Screenshot of them saying hot. And then we have somebody by the handle Sweet Baby Rays stating Charlie likes C. Magpie says, I do like C. This will have to be censored. Magpie says, I am somebody that touches kids, not in a good way. And this other person says, I know, Charlie, I know. This Discord user says, I don't understand what you're saying. Magpie says, I'm going to be a Shota artist. I want to be a Shota artist. I literally just had to look this up in Urban Dictionary because I didn't know what it meant. According to Urban Dictionary, Shota means young boys between the ages of five and 13. And then he says, no, and please tell me if anything I do makes you uncomfortable. I know I'm into a lot of weird things too, like Shota and non-con. Non-con means non-consensual. You can know what that implies. And then somebody says, I'm obsessed with 
with Vienna sausages. Magpie says, ew. Somebody says, they're so good. Magpie says, Shota Leo's member is bigger and better than that. Uh, I need therapy after this, guys, please. Magpie says, I'm going to make a chinchilla Shota OC with a huge member. Photos of an OC that looks like Sonic with a very, very young looking kid. It's anime. This makes me mad uncomfortable to look at. Mag says, but Venti, I want to bone that tiny thing. I'm not attending them. I don't have time for this. Instead, I finish up the Shoto Gallo. I don't even know what that means. This is at least my personal take. People on the internet don't like my take about lollies. Here's my take. I don't care if they are canonically aged to be three bajillion years old. It makes me uncomfortable to see characters that are drawn to look like they are no older than 12. I don't care if they're canonically 15 billion years old. If they are drawn to look like 12 year old kids, it makes me very, 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 very uncomfortable. Venti from Genshin. Venti to me looks like a 13 year old kid. It's my personal take. This is the hill I will die on. That makes me uncomfortable. Okay guys, N word trigger warning. All right guys, I'm blocking it out with my little stream labels because I don't want to show the full thing, but it is what the hard R guys. I'm just gonna slide this over here and we can see that letter and you can put two and two together as to what this bro said. So we have this conversation between Magpie and somebody else. Magpie, I'm going to F him. Then Magpie says, I would suck his, you know what? The other person, that's a child, Charlie. Mag says, who cares if it's a child? And then Mag follows up with, as Noodle says, the younger, the better. Okay, so more sus stuff and then DMs. I'm not gonna show this one because I can't really open it, but Big Mouth and Shota Leo and Gallo for tonight. And then Mag says, I'm drawing Shota. All right, here's a tweet from them. Shoot the N word with the hard R. I didn't even see that. The archives telegram page says, for those who aren't aware, Chenet is a ship between an adult and a confirmed minor in the game. Genshin Bennett is a kid. The archive says, noticed overnight that the archive was suddenly being looked at again. These were not posted because Magpie was gaining traction for their badges. The Discord messages were sent to me by a third party while the Instagram messages were experienced by me. I don't have a Twitter. I hope everyone stays safe. Oh boy. And then they posted this gem. Magpie went on Twitter, didn't like private their Twitter for some reason, posted this thread. I recognize that people would be upset about what I have said in the past. I like to address those things. Racism. I admit I've said these things in the past. As I've grown, I realize that it's done more harm than good. It's not worth it for a bit of humor. I was around 14 when I said these things and for the longest time, I've been so embarrassed, ashamed, and disappointed in myself about it. I was involved with a group of friends that encouraged this type of behavior. The group consisted of Finch Rot, Alpha Douche, Silence Ron, Breeding Bunny, and a handful of other people that are not online much anymore. It influenced me to think the same humor was okay and to joke about at the time. We all did. I'm not a fan of hypocrisy since they also have done the things they're stating about me. I've understood for a long time that it isn't. I have changed. I understand that it isn't an excuse for what was said, but please know I'm a completely different person from when I was a child. It's no longer an apology if you throw other people under the bus in the same quote unquote apology, because now it doesn't sound like you're sorry. Now it sounds like you're trying to pin the blame on somebody else. Doesn't matter, the N-word came out of your mouth. So doesn't matter who you were around. If you're around people that were saying it, you still should have not said it. Also the whole argument of like, it was just the times back then. Look, man, I grew up in the times of people saying the N-word. I never said it because I realized it's not cool for an Asian girl to be saying it. So I don't know why common sense is so few and far between these days. Even if you happen to fall into those times, whatever, you don't sound sorry if you're throwing other people under the bus. The P-word. First thing I like to address are the screenshots where I've said I am a child poker. This was the same group of people I was involved with before and it's not something I meant seriously at all. Dude, how does somebody not mean it and type that out and say it? Genuinely, how do you type I am somebody who has kids and not mean it. You would never catch me typing that out ever because I would literally throw up and gouge my own eyeballs out before I would type that. Yeah, also that's the thing. Like the argument, I didn't mean it, but I said it anyways. Like, why did you say it then if you didn't mean it? That I don't understand that argument at all. This was the same group of people I was involved with before. It's not something I meant seriously at all. The second things are the ones from Discord. Around 15 to 16, I had some really bad essay things happen to me. It destroyed me, tore me apart. I was suggested to cope using fictional media. The more I grew up, the more I realized how it really wasn't helping, but only causing more harm. So I quickly backed away from it as I've gone older. I've also been to therapy for this and I've found many other coping mechanisms that work for me. I do not condone child enjoyment. I do not support anything related. And it art. I've played Genshin since day one it came out. I no longer played, but at the time I was fully 100% invested with Bennett's character. It was a very strong hyper fixation with him. I played every story, every quest or whatever that has to deal with him. Nowhere has it said anything about his age, so I felt it was okay to draw NSFW of him. I'm not believing this for one second. If you say you are 100% invested with this character, you are hyper fixated, it was a strong hyper fixa fixation, you played everything, you did everything, how did you not know his age? How did you not Google his age? I'm sure you would have Googled all lore and fun facts about Bennett. I do not believe this for one second. I've had games where I got extremely immersed in and 
I hyper fixated and went and Googled every single piece of lore I could get about the game. I'm not believing the fact that you hyper fixated on his character, but then didn't learn about his age. I imagine him as 19 years old. I mentioned that before. I don't know if he has an official age or not, if Mihoyo has said anything, but I'm getting told a lot that he's a minor, which I had no idea about. How did you not know, but other people knew? But you are the one with the extreme hyper fixation on Bennett. The cat post. This is not true. I understand that the post says, but this was a crude joke I was making with my friends. This was the same bad group I was involved in. We were all making terrible jokes like that. I would never do anything to my cat or creature at all. I do not condone animal stuff. Please, please, please know I have grown and changed. This is something that I'm absolutely ashamed to see being leaked. It's really something I hope would just be left in the past. I've grown and I've worked so, so hard to change and I've done just that. I was a naive child. That doesn't mean that people aren't allowed to feel uncomfortable or hurt. What I had said in the past were rough. All I can ask for is people to understand that I am a new person that is no longer alive so I live anymore. The Twitter user Butt Teeth says what I'm thinking truly. Some of the screenshots were from 2020 and 2022. How could you have been a teenager yet also claim to have been in art school for six years? Also, 2022 is only two years ago. We can expect people to change. People change at different speeds. But if your level of bad was so far off the deep end, two years isn't enough to rein you back. That's my take. Okay, if you're like an art tracer and you learn, you reform, you stop tracing, I feel like that's something you could do in a short window. You could just like immediately stop tracing again. It would take people maybe a little bit, a couple months to trust you. But if you continue producing good work, people can trust that you don't trace anymore. If you are into kid stuff and you are into animals and you are a racist who has said the n-word you are so off the deep end at this point that two years is not enough for you to be a reformed human being but yeah here's proof of them stating that they've been art school for six years they said i went to an art school instead of a high school for four years lyra says what doesn't make sense to me is that most four-year schools slash universities including art schools require standardized test results a weighted gpa score for all four years of high schooling and the high school diploma which verifies your education level none of this makes sense let alone six years as a teenager Major. If that's the case, a good majority of artists in this fandom would have attended college level art programs at the same age you have claimed to attend. Dexter says, using information from their website and furry amino, it's possible they were 13, assuming this is the truth and nothing has been changed, which would make them 21 now at bare minimum. So they were a sophomore early. Amino profile name change since creation or lying on website. So here they state that they founded Magpie Madness LLC in their sophomore year. Dog Yumi says, doesn't matter if they were 13, still lying about art school, but also there is no excuse for being racist and into kids. Plus, the stuff was also said in 2020 and 2022, so you're an adult at that point. Puppy Dozer says, how old are you now? Trying to understand how old you were at the time of some of these posts. M4 says, I try to stay anonymous as possible for my own safety, but I'm in my early 20s now. Wart says, and this is very true, even if you were 21 now, you would have been 18 saying this. This would have been in 2020, where Mag, say, Mag is saying they want to f a kid where it says and this is your earliest offenses not to mention just two years ago i'm sorry i really doubt you and this whole chat story too how can so many screenshots take place over many years in formats and you're the common denominator mellow says you're staying you're saying in your 20s now but a lot of the creepy screenshots are from only a few years ago you weren't a quote-unquote child when you said those things here's the other thing too which is why i can't give this guy the benefit of the doubt not because there's just so much fucked up shit because there is but guys all of us have been teenagers at some point when you were 13 years old if you want to date somebody that is also 13, you don't say, I want to F a kid. You say, I want to date somebody. I want to date a teenager. You know, when I was 13, I was like, oh yeah, like I want to date like a boy. You don't say I want to date children. You don't consider your peers as children. So you're aiming for an age much lower. No matter what age you were when you made that tweet, the context looks really bad. The icing on the cake, the least bad of all of this, but still bad. We then have a tweet from Nano Cakes. Okay, what's this? Here's a photo of a badge. Here's another photo of a badge. So they're a tracer too, like the mouth positioning, everything. By the way, for their hand-drawn, hand-colored in badges, they charge a thousand dollars. And then we have a tweet from Saber Coded stating from somebody who wants to stay a non, they're a they are indeed still being racist, so take that as what you will. So the person is anon, but they're stating, when I was hanging out with them in person, they made a lot of racist jokes about black people calling them monkeys and stuff. When on call, he was bragging about, he says the N-word, then was trying to pressure me to say it since he thought it was funny. When I was hanging with him and his friends at AC, so I think Anthrocon, the first thing they asked when I got in the car was if I was okay with N-word usage. That source is anon, whether they're credible or not, we don't really know. But I believe it, to be honest. And I think this final thing shows us how the original reason why this crop up in the first place, why I gave them the benefit of the doubt, because I was like, artists can charge what prices they want, you know, whatever, right? If you can't afford it, it is what it is. I take that back. This is from Saber Coded, from an anonymous source on Magpie's private Insta account. Personally, this isn't an attack about their pricing, more so about the fact they continue to lie and it really shows their character behind closed doors. There was some person who asked me yesterday why my furry prices are more expensive than my anime prices. Furry busts are $100 
$40, while anime ones are $45. It took me everything not to say it was an interaction fee because good lord, some furries give me actual flashbacks. Literally, anytime I see any furry that interacted with XYZ, I'll go into this huge meltdown of anxiety. Why are you tabling at a furry con if you don't want to tar like talk to furries? Here are their older commission prices. $200 chest up, $240 chibi, $340 full body. For the flats, by the way, what this means in art terms is it means unrendered. So you put the colors on as if you're filling in a coloring book, right? But you didn't like add all the highlights and shadows to make it pop and to make it shine. So it's about like halfway through the drawing process. Body pillow, $600. Can do NSFW, 18 plus only. And Bennett says, if furries are going to give me a form of PTSD, then they can pay extra. I don't care anymore. Well, it's crazy that his body pillows are $600, which is arguably way more time consuming to make than a traditionally drawn bust. Cody says their prices for their badges more than doubled in two months. So here he says, taking two traditional badges for FWA delivery, $410. Comes with two copies, the original and color testing sheet. Original is framed for safe DM or comment to claim. And let me remind you, he charges $1,000 now for traditional. So I do agree in like artists being able to charge whatever prices they want to charge on some instances. But bro, if you like doubled your prices like that, and I do think that artists should double their prices right because if you if you have like too much demand then doubling your prices reduces the demand in half but you also make the same amount of money it's like a business tactic there's also an upper threshold to how much you can charge and he's exceeding the up upper threshold and then doubling it in terms of furry badges there is like a market range for how much people charge so if you go over that and you double it with a level of work that is traced and expected at best it's not like astronomically good then you then look very cash grabby and they are cash grabby because they're out here shitting on furries the exact audience they're trying to get to commission them don't bite the hand that feeds you i feel like out of everybody that i've ever covered on my youtube videos nobody has trumped this level of bad